I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I actually was talking to someone and realized that there's a really important concept of long-term and short-term rental availability and real estate availability on the market here that people aren't thinking about, no one's talked about, and I've never realized in all the times we've talked about it, and that is the time sensitivity of looking for apartments. What do I mean? How does this affect you? Let's get to that right after the bump. Okay, so I was asked this question today. Scott, I'm coming down to Nicaragua. I'm going to be in Leon, where I am. So presumably I have good line on what's available as far as apartments and rentals and those kinds of things. And I was asked, do you know of any good long-term rentals that'll be available? I'll be coming down in September and looking for a year. And I thought to myself, well, how could I possibly know what's going to be available in September? And then it occurred to me that we've never talked about this. And if you live in the United States, if you live in Canada, probably as well, it is really, really common that when you're going to rent, you're going to rent from a company that has a, an apartment complex or a large slew of houses, a development area, and there's going to be lots and lots of inventory on the market that is essentially identical. Yes, it could, you might be you know, looking at unit number 12 today, and then later it's going to be 13, and four will come back on the market. When I've rented apartments in the United States, right, I'm used to this. I've rented all over the country, and I'm used to just you walk in, you look at a model, and you say, a, a model apartment, and you say, this, I like this layout, where can I find one of these? And they say, yeah, we've got this many available. And you say, okay, let me go see the one that's available right now. You walk in, you go, yeah, I take it, and it's just a price, right? That is generally the process in the US, and of course there's exceptions, but that is generally the price. And when you're looking at like Airbnb, you just go online, you look at the listings, and you just pick something, and you don't really think about it. And a lot of people have asked me, but it didn't quite get asked in quite this way that was so dramatic, and it certainly didn't hit me previously, that people are regularly asking me if I know about places, but they're not looking to rent them. And so this has always struck me as very strange. I never understood why people were asking me for such a weird request, other than just doing some market research. But I do explain why that wouldn't work for market research. Because unless we're actually going and negotiating a deal, we're not finding out what something actually costs. Like we just never get to that point. And even if we do negotiate, you're just finding out what we were able to get, not what it's really worth, but that's a separate thing. But you can't go around and just collect prices. Like that doesn't exist. You can't just go around and collect inventory. That doesn't exist. But it occurred to me that this question made so little sense to me, but obviously made so much sense to the person asking it, that there was a disconnect. And what that disconnect is, I believe, is that uh, North Americans very often do not realize or are not internalizing the fact that every single rental unit in the nation of Nicaragua is a completely independent animal, meaning that anything you're going to find, whether it's in a complex, I mean, I understand there are a few things that are slightly less than this. Like I know of an apartment building in this area that has four units. So those four they all have the same price. They all have the same location. They all have the same features. And so if one of them is available, then, you know, then you kind of know about it. But that's very much the exception and still falls within this, like not what Americans are expecting. But so right now, let's say throughout all of Leon, there are eight furnished apartments or houses that and almost always houses never. I've never seen a furnished apartment apartment. Um, I'm sure they exist, but extremely rare throughout the entire city that are available for uh, expats. And by Available for expats, I mean that you have some way to find, is some way set up that you would be happy with it, those kinds of things that are viable for this discussion. I'm not saying that there aren't options if you really needed it and you couldn't coerce someone of things that are furnished, maybe eight. And there are tons of people looking every day for furnished apartments and a lot of people who are willing to do something else if they can't find what they need. But so if you have a furnished apartment on the market, you're one of extremely few. They are outrageously rare. There's plenty of non-furnished long-term rentals that exist pretty pretty heavily but furnished literally there's just a handful across the city of 300,000 people and if you go out into the area beyond the city there's zero in most cases of course the beach would have a couple but all of these cases extremely extremely rare unless you're looking at Airbnb and go look at that there aren't many so when someone says do you know of any Unless you're standing here with me or you want to send me out, and I don't do this as a service, I'm not saying you could do this, but you're not asking me to do this. But unless you were saying, Scott, can you, do you know of a place? Oh, yeah, I know a guy. So, well, can you call him right now? I want it today. Oh, if I knew of someone, I could call them and you could take it today. That would make sense. But if I know of a house available today, 
And I said, yeah, I know of a house. It's $450 a month. Here's all the details. He said, great. I'll go look at that in September. That makes no sense. The chances that it'll be available in a few weeks, let alone in September, is very much zero because there's always someone looking for a, a, a furnished place. Those are really high demand. Rare, they don't exist, and the demand is only high because there's so few of them, right? The people from my channel alone take up more demand than the city has to supply. That's just, that's how little demand, it's not how many people are coming from my channel. That's how little of this there is. It's just not a thing that Nicaraguans, right? Nicaraguans themselves never look for this. Those of us who live here long-term never look for this. This is a very niche thing for people who are in the process of relocating or doing extreme slow travel, but not so extreme as to just go buy your own stuff. So it's this really, really tiny sliver of the population wants to do this, and most just suffice to use Airbnb or hotels or hostels or some mechanism like that. They don't worry about looking for this kind of thing, or they just give up and they and they move on. So anything that I knew about would be gone by the time you got here because there would be one. It'd be one unique place. And then he said, well, there must be another like it. I'd be like, what do you mean another one like it? Where? There's only one in an entire barrio originally. That one is gone. That barrio may go another year or two before it has another one come up for it. We'd have to go look over the entire city. We'd be looking at different neighborhoods, different access to resources, different pricing, different features, different styles, because every barrio is different. And you'd end up with something completely different. And the price may or may not be similar. The size may or may not be similar and so forth. And so if you're not looking to actively take one right away, the act of searching for it other than interest or trying to establish what reasonable prices and, and access are is essentially useless. You, you can't do like the United States, and I totally get this. It, when I lived in Dallas, we would drive up and look at apartment complexes, mostly with my daughter because she's, you know, dreaming about the future when she's going to move out. She never wanted to move super far. So we would look like a few towns away to give that perfect distance for a daughter who doesn't want to move super far from her family, but does want to live on her own. Great. So we would go out and just for fun, go look at apartment complexes and they would have thousands of units and they would be turning over all the time. Of course, people rented for long periods of time, but they would often have people that were staying for periods of uh, time and then leaving on a regular basis. Say the average person was three years. Then you always had 20 or 30 or a thousand that were available at any given moment. And if this complex didn't have one, this one next to it had another several thousand at very similar prices, at very similar amenities, at very similar quality, right? You didn't have big variations. And so you could you know, within a, a scope of, of, of uh, cone of, of unknown, right, cone of, of uh, indeterminability, right, you could really narrow down, okay, I want to live within this little area, and this is how much I'll pay, and this is what I'll get for that, and have a really good idea. And we did that all over the country. And we had, you know, I understand why you're used to this, right? Because you can do that. What would it cost? What would the availability be? Well, I can be within this neighborhood. Oh, sure. The unit you talked about isn't, but the one next to it is no problem, right? Nicaragua is nothing like that. Not in Managua, not in San Juan del Sur, not in Granada, not in Leon does not exist. You may find a single very specific situation somewhere that's that's an anomaly, but I know of literally none. I'm just saying that there probably is one somewhere uh, and probably in an expat community, right? Not in like Nicaragua normal, not Nicaragua proper. This is absolutely unheard of. So this is an important thought process that needs to change. You can't and we always say, don't look from abroad, don't look ahead of time. And that's not what people are doing, right? In this case, they're just asking me, what do I know? Do I have a connection to someone? Sure. But even that, in a different sense, doesn't make any sense. The don't look from abroad, don't look online, that's because you're going to get gringo priced, you're going to get misled. Like, that's that's a different concern. But the don't look too early, other than you just want to see what styles are, you want to know, like, a kind of vibe, maybe get to know neighborhoods, all that certainly makes sense ahead of time. But if you, when we say you got to be here and put boots on the ground, we, the degree to which we mean that is just extreme. You got to be here, put boots on the ground, literally walk around and go, yes, I'm going to take this right now. If you go look at a place, assume you need to make that decision right away. Now, I'm not saying places move so fast. If they're furnished, they generally move pretty fast because no one wants to provide furnished. They have massive overheads and problems. It really is difficult to do, which is why I have one. And I had someone in it today. They were very happy. This is the first day we had a checkout of our new apartment that's available, but we have only one. So like, even I can't say, Oh, you want to take that in September? It's almost certainly gone. I know as a person who has one that the chances that mine will be available is extremely little. Uh, and so 
And this whole concept of, of just looking ahead of time, very difficult, but who's going to think of that? So this is me telling you that you can't look for specifics ahead of time. You can't ask if I know something ahead of time. I mean, I get it. I, I love having the conversations with you guys. I'm not trying to be like, don't ask me things. I just want to have you have a realistic expectation and something I can link to and be like, I can't give you that information. You're not here ready to sign on the dotted line. So looking, even if you're two weeks out, useless. They're going to take whoever signs first. So if you, if you want, when you're ready to look at things, just for another reason that you hadn't thought of, you need to be here, be active. You could be like in Leon and have someone in Managua go look and they'd be like, hey, I found a perfect spot for you. Get down here. Or do you want me to sign for it right now? Like, sure. But you got to be ready to make that commitment right on the spot to take it essentially right away. Or your, your whole search is going to be moot and it will be a waste of time and you'll have to start over anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> it just, just occurred to me, I'm just literally recording this minutes before. I'm going to stop this recording and run straight in and kick off the live stream. That's where we are right now. So that's what we have going on. Um, it's been a really good, exciting week. Good stuff. I'm really excited about yesterday's episode with uh, Eric Peterson from Generic Ex Expats. Uh, the whole channel has just been doing exciting stuff recently. I thank you so much for everyone who has joined, has become part of our community, is getting involved here. Thank you so much, Uh Get down below, ask your questions. You can email me as well. Uh, you can, uh, of course, if you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It's a simple web page. Just go there, put in a credit card, and you can support the channel for one coffee or 10 coffees, whatever whatever you know you feel led to do. And uh, as always, if you would be so kind as to share on social media, tell a friend or family member about the show, get the word out there, get someone interested in learning more about Nicaragua, travel, any of those things. We're going to be uh, pumping out Latin American living podcast in just a couple days. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you would be so kind, these videos that pop up on the screen, or even if they don't, please find another one of our videos or generic expats or Elton from immense coffee movement or one of our other friends or affiliated channels, Nicaragua 360, uh, drive warp, any of those, uh, even the everyday vlogger hit one of those, let it play. Thank you so much.